Hi, in this Affinity Tool tutorial, we are going to look at the left toolbar of Affinity Designer. I've already gone through all the tools in Affinity Publisher. You can find that in my Affinity Publisher playlist um, for the tutorials. But there are some tools that are in Designer that are not in Publisher. So we're going to catch up on those ones that are only in Designer uh, that we haven't already done. So we've done the move tool, so let's start with the artboard tool. So I have an existing document here that I just created. You can see in the layers I've got nothing so far. So let's actually start out by putting something on there. So I'm just going to quickly put a shape on here and a piece of text. All right, so now you can see in my layers panel here that I have the text and the shape there. So I'm going to go to the artboard tool and um, right now it says in the contextual toolbar document. So what that means is that we are looking at the size of the whole document and I'm going to push insert artboard. Doesn't look like anything happened, but what it did was it converted my document into an artboard. So that's kind of the first step. So I'm going to expand this and here are the layers that I originally created before this was an artboard. Now this is labeled Artboard 1. So if I wanted to change the name of this artboard, I could do that. And so I could say this is letter size. And some of the applications of artboards um, for creators would be um, if you're creating a set of something and you want to be able to see them all in the same file, uh, maybe side by side, it could be something like digital papers where you want them to be kind of similar have similar color schemes, and so you could create multiple papers in a single file. You could also do the same for clip art. If you wanted to create clip art that was all in a similar style, see it all in the same file on the same screen all at once so that you can work on it. Mockups would be another thing where you might want to be able to see different versions of the mockup or different um, slides of the mockups. If you're doing like Etsy listings, for example, and you have multiple mockup images, you can, may want those to be together as a set. Same thing with social media images. Maybe you want to have different sized images for your Facebook, your Pinterest, your Instagram, and but you'd like to see them all on the same file. Maybe you can just copy and paste and resize uh, to the different sizes of social media images. You could even combine your mockups with your social media images so that you have um, everything looking very similar and everything related to a product all in the same file. All right, so that's the application of it. So we converted our document into an artboard, but now if we push this insert artboard again, that's when we start to actually insert an artboard. We're getting a second artboard that was created right next to the one that we already had. And so that one has been labeled with another term of artboard. So if, if we had left this artboard one, this would be artboard two. So let's go ahead and change that and we'll call this our Pinterest pin. Now Pinterest pin is not letter sized. So how could we change the size of this? Well, if we were on the artboard tool and I select this artboard by clicking on it or select it here so that it's highlighted pink, now you see I have a bounding box on my artboard and I can actually pull this and just resize this to whatever size I want. Now Pinterest has a specific uh, dimension as do most social media platforms. So um, we can go to window, transform, and now because this is selected, has the bounding box on it, my transform window will show the width and the height of this. So I can say that my Pinterest pin should be 1000 pixels wide by 1500 pixels tall. And now it has resized it to exactly that size and shape. So when you are looking at the layers for your artboard, you can see that we have the text and the shape here. Let's just um, create another shape on this pin and some, oops, there's two shapes. Uh, let's put some text on there as well. And you'll see that as long as I have this artboard selected, it is putting those elements under that Pinterest pin artboard. 
If you're getting a lot of artboards um, and it's getting a little confusing in your layers, you can always collapse the ones that you're not using. You can also select an artboard and lock it. And that way, if you are working with multiple artboards, you don't accidentally hit something and, and drag it out. Oops, let me get off the text tool. But now that it's locked, I can't move anything on that artboard, but I can still do it on my Pinterest pin because I did not lock it. So we can go ahead and unlock this. If you wanna hide all the elements on an artboard, you can just toggle the visibility. It doesn't get rid of the artboard, but it does get rid of all the elements on it and just hides them. Another thing to be mindful is, is if I wanted to move this over to this artboard, I can just drag it over and you'll see that the layer moved over here. If I move this back up this way, you can see that box is still here. It hasn't physically moved. So I need to go to the move tool and move this back over here. So let me just do that again because that happened all pretty fast. But if I pick this up and move it to another artboard, it moved it to that artboard in my layers panel. If I move something to a different artboard using the layers panel, the bounding box of the element is still here, even though we can't see it here. So I have to physically pick it up and move it over to that artboard. Okay, one last thing, and I think this is probably the cool, coolest thing if you are uh, making sets of things, and that is to go over to the export persona here, and now it's turned each of my artboards into a slice. And what a slice is, is like an image. So you can see it has my Pinterest pin artboard, my letter sized one, and I can expand these out and we can change what kind of image we want to export this at. So let's just say, I'm actually going to hold uh, command or control, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC, and let's change this to a single JPEG. And you can also change these individually. If I say I want this one to be a PNG and this one to be a JPEG, you can do that. Um, I don't wanna to get too deep into this because this isn't really about the export persona, it's about the artboards. However, the cool thing is, is it's going to pick up the name from my artboard. So if you want your image to be labeled a certain something, just kind of be mindful of that as you're labeling your artboard. You can also, click this little arrow box and just export this single image. Or you can come down here and whichever ones you have selected using these little dots here, you can export and we can just export those to our downloads or wherever you wanna save it. And let me just open up my finder here and here's my two artboards that I just exported. So if you are working, let's say, on a bunch of mock-ups and social images all in one file, you can export them all together. It'll pick up the names from the artboards and it'll just export them all at once. So really handy feature. All right. Thank you so much for watching.